Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a glorious afternoon here in the mountains in Italy with the newest addition to the Shmi Mobiles, the Audi RS3 Saloon, the new Schmuseum team car. A couple of days ago, Brad and I flew over from the Schmuseum to Germany to collect the new car. We had a quick look at it, but at the time we weren't yet able to tell you what it's like to drive. Well, we've already done a thousand kilometers driving from Munich through the south of Germany all the way across Austria and now into Italy well, we are currently in a ski resort. We have some amazing roads around, so we can take a full look at this. The third generation Audi RS3, the saloon here in turbo blue, but we'll go through all of the details and crucially, what this is like to actually drive, to take it on some of the lovely roads here with plenty of switchbacks, hairpins to enjoy and see what it's all about. This is it, the Schmuseum team car, the Audi RS3 saloon. <laughs> Look at this car then. I think very suited to the roads I am about to be driving it on in the new turbo blue color, a very different shade to all of the other Schmiemobiles. But we are now lucky to be the custodians of this RS3 saloon at the Schmuseum for the next six months or so, fitting very much in with the color theme of the day. We've got a bit of snow up towards the mountain peaks, so the car's been running on winter tires, given what we're going to be doing with it. I think that makes sense over the upcoming period. But it was out in Munich as part of the media launch for UK journalists to fly out for a first drive in the new RS3, which is what today is going to be about, to go through all of the details of this car, the third generation now of the RS3, the RS badge, on typically the small hatchback, but for the second generation, they introduced the saloon. We now have the third generation, or second generation, you could say, of the saloon itself. Now, one thing that really stands out is they managed to maintain the five-cylinder engine, the 2.5-litre turbo five-pot, which sounds glorious. It still actually sounds really good, despite the OPFs and new sound regulations and that side of things, making, in this case, 400 horsepower, 500 newton meters, featuring the quattro all-wheel drive system, the S-Tronic seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox, and the RS torque vectoring, which means a bit of a drift mode, so to speak, with the power being able to be adjusted between the rear wheels, depending exactly what you're doing with it. In terms of the styling, it is much more aggressive than before, and particularly around towards the front. Come and have a look here. And this is the launch edition, by the way, so very highly equipped. There are a few different levels. The only one that comes above this is the Vorsprung, which would add 360 cameras. We just have the rear camera on this car, and it would change the wheel design slightly. But we have things like the LED matrix headlights, the adaptive radar for the cruise control, the black pack, which you can see particularly around the very large front grille, lots of edges and shapes. You can see the air curtains to direct airflow. You've got pieces like this, for example, aero blade just sitting out behind those front wheels. It is a much more sporty design than before, while still being a very compact car. A compact car with 400 horsepower that can do the launch control sprint to 100 kilometers an hour, 62 miles an hour in just 3.8 seconds. And the launch edition also comes with the raised top speed limit to 280 kilometers an hour, 174 miles an hour, as opposed to the standard 250 Ks, 155 miles per hour. This is a UK car, of course. It's very kind of Audi to be allowing us to run it for the upcoming period. We've got the oval sports exhaust, the RS exhaust, again, part of the special launch edition. As you can tell, I'm short on breath. We are very high in altitude at the moment. Beautiful views and amazing roads to check out in a moment. Inside, we've got the black leather, as you can see. I'm just going to take a seat on board for a moment. Audi Sport, got the nice screens. Started up and you can hear a little bit of how this does sound. And we've got the drive select, so you can change the different drive modes and go through, for example, the configurable settings. RS Torque Rear is where you have a lot of fun. We're in dynamic now. As you can hear, that nice five-cylinder rasp, it really suits the character of the car, and it's great that they've been able to maintain that in both this and, of course, the Sportback equivalent as well. We'll have a better look around the interior shortly. For the moment, though, I think we should get prepared and set to go for a drive. That's what this is all about. We had a full look at the spec in a way when we were picking it up in Munich at the Audi Conference Center, but now it's time to take it on the roads. We've had a good run on the Autobahn, although winter tires obviously mean a slightly lower speed limit. In fact, it tells us right there, limited for our drive to 240 kilometers an hour, 
150 miles per hour. So that is all we've been able to do with it for now, but maybe we'll see if that can change going into the new year as the weather starts to improve after the winter season. I suppose I should stop talking. We should get out on the road and go see what this is like. The first time that I ever drove on this particular piece of tarmac, I was actually at the wheel of a Porsche 918 Spyder. So safe to say I have some pretty fond memories of it. And since then, I've been here with many different cars while making my way south into, well, further into Italy, coming through the Alps. And it's a wonderful place to be, glorious views. And we seem to be very lucky with today's weather. It is currently showing about 10 degrees, which is not exactly the warmest, but to be here at this time of the year and to have weather like this is simply stunning. Anyway, to talk about the car, we're currently in auto everything. Obviously, we've got drive select. You can change all of the settings. We have the individual mode. You can configure it all. It's all magnificent. But like this, it feels like a nice, fun, sporty car. Yeah, there's not loads of sound, but perhaps a little bit more than you might be expecting in the current era, the era of OPFs and everything being very, very quiet, which begs an interesting question, obviously, about exhausts. When you go into dynamic, it all gets a little bit louder. But like this, steering is light, the gearbox is magnificent, the Audi gearboxes, the dual clutches always have been, and with many manufacturers, certainly at this kind of price point and style of car, going towards auto boxes now instead of dual clutches, you appreciate quite how fast this can shift and how clever it is, how intelligent it is. It knows exactly what you want out of it, what you're getting up to, and look at this view out the front. This is simply magnificent. If we pop it though into dynamic, which defaults to everything into its most dynamic of settings. A little bit of sound out of the five pot there as we head down the hill towards the sun. And I apologize for any sun glare that we might have uh, on the video at the moment. You get those nice shift sounds, those raspy pops. So we just drop down. And like I said, the gearbox shifts magnificently whether you're doing it manually with the paddles which are improved versus the previous gen it feels like a very small car you've got good visibility all around you obviously primarily a hatchback and then offered also in the saloon body style but a car that can be used obviously as a daily without it really standing out yes it looks a bit sportier obviously but it's still an audi a3 at the end of the day it's an audi a3 that has a lot of go as i said the acceleration numbers are really quite impressive and it's really just that kind of car that ticks every box in one. It's practical, you can take your friends in the back of it, you know, you've got no problems using it and relying on it. And that's why it's going to fulfill our purposes very well as the Schmuseum team car. And I'm actually gonna spin around and head back up here. Yeah, this is exactly where I started my drive in the 918 when I was here with a 918 Spider and a P1 about seven years ago. It's crazy how quickly time actually flies, but as so we pull out here and first gear just put the foot down yeah it, it certainly knows how to get a move on this thing absolutely blasts away and to be honest the steering is really quite nice for obviously the electronic variable steering everything about the car is positive and this for me begs an interesting question because as it's spec this car is just over sixty thousand pounds whereas my m3 which is not a particularly high spec m3 was already £20,000 more than that. This feels like a relative bargain. Yes, it's 100 horsepower down, but it's got Quattro, it's off the line very quickly. My M3 is the rear wheel drive as opposed to the MX drive. And although some of the sound obviously inside here is speaker pumped, it still sounds good as a result. So we're gonna come back to that little tunnel in just a moment. It's a cool place to be, isn't it? Driving in the mountains and the new RS3 and we'll go out the other side of the town and enjoy some hairpins and really quite fun roads just after this. So drop down the gears, maybe we go down to first gear, go into the tunnel. <laughs> it does go up through the revs very, very quickly. But the big thing is that the torque is so much more usable now versus the previous iteration power is still at 400 as it was before but with 20 newton meters more and crucially talk earlier in the rev range that's where you feel most of the difference now with what they've done god this is breathtaking right let's get through the town out the other side and onto some twisties heading uphill then we also in here have the rs button on the steering wheel so we've either got rs individual or rs performance which wakes it up even more 
And I think one of the most impressive things with this is how quickly you get on the power and it just takes off, honestly. The performance is there very, very quickly. There is a sense of the turbo lag, the tradition with this engine, and you feel it building as you get higher up towards the rev range. I would like the seats to be a little bit more supportive. You feel a little bit like you're being thrown around a touch in here, but the sound of it, as we make our way up through the various hairpins here, and if you were traction off, of course, you could let the back slide and dance around a little bit. But this is where very few other cars could go point to point on a road like this quicker than this does. And it sounds good on the shifts as well, the sounds you get on the downshifts. And the steering is, I think, significantly improved versus before. That's one of the big things they worked on, making the track wider at the front and giving it wider wheels and tyres as well. If you then want to let the car allow you to play a little bit more, obviously you can press traction into the sport setting. I'm not going to try and be too brave given we're on a very narrow mountain pass at the moment. But this thing obviously has launch control, maybe we'll get somewhere we can test that very shortly. It's just a really good all-round car. That's one of the great things about it. Yes, the interior is perhaps not as premium as even the M3 or something in the segment above this, but that's not really what you're looking at when you're driving along a road like this, is it? It's all about the driving experience and what it's like get back on the power and we're going uphill accelerating that hard it's really really very impressive we've also got just go carefully around the other cars here on the screen we can go into car and we can go into RS monitor you got a series of different displays temperatures g-forces tire temperatures and pressures you can have all of those up as well done a 1g left turn just now on winter tires obviously pop this thing on to um, summer tyres and it's going to allow you to go even more. Can't get my head around how quickly this can get up a road like this. My ears are popping as we go. Another thing that we haven't done is try the launch control. So we've got traction in sport. I'm going to pop open the sunroof. You can open it fully. I'm going to put the car into auto. So come to a standstill, foot firmly on the brake, foot on the throttle, launch control program activated, go. That is ferociously fast. That's really, really, really very, very quick, as you'd expect. That's where this car truly excels. Wow. Yeah, just obviously building up the boost, unleashing it all, Quattro doing its thing, changing the distribution of power, depending obviously what you're doing, how you're driving, etc., And certainly doing its best possible job of going very, very fast. Now, if I turn around, one thing I'm not the biggest fan of is the turning circle. The turning circle, being a small car with four-wheel drive, means that, yeah, well, you might hope you could do a full loop there. I, oh, yeah, we can do it, we can do it, but the point is the same. It, it's not the best for this kind of thing. We managed, but it's not the best. The ride is decent, the ride isn't too firm. Obviously, when you're in performance dynamic, whichever setting, it firms up significantly. But when you pop it back, out of RS mode into auto, into automatic on the gearbox. Everything's pretty comfortable. It's just a nice car to drive again. Steering feels a little bit more disconnected, but it's so nice and dynamic that, yeah, why not just rock and roll it that way? Oh, we've had a 1G acceleration and a 1.1G left turn. Anyway, you get the point. It's just a car that, yeah, okay, it's not the most premium of premium cars, but it's not the price point of that either. And for the price point it is at, it's fascinating to think, you know, how does this compare to say the A45S? It sounds significantly better with the five cylinder. Um, and it goes really pretty well. I'd love to do almost a back-to-back -back drive to see how they actually stack up as cars. But let's pull in here into a slightly snow-filled car park. We've got a stop sign. I suppose we better follow the rules because I want to show you a little bit more around the inside of the RS3. Well, it's a lot colder in the shade, but the view is pretty impressive with the mountains over in front of us. But looking around here a little bit more, obviously we've got the reversing camera up at the moment, which has a tendency to get very dirty very quickly. We've noticed it must be quite low down. Obviously in here, you've got the haptic feel on the nav 
and infotainment and there's a lot in there that you can change and do and settings and all of the different pages that you can imagine um, your tiles on the main front screen down here i quite like you've got the wireless charging pad a couple of usb ports so we can both charge our phones on the go this is your very small selector for drive or for reverse popping it into park and then for the media this works nicely it's like an old ipad mini you just rotate your finger around start stop button central console some cup holder space we've got a few things tucked away inside there decent sized door pockets glove boxes not the largest in the world i'm not the biggest fan of the vents either they feel a bit awkward obviously you've got the hexagonal shapes which continue everywhere around the car the front grille um, and all of the different design elements that you can see around the door handles are quite fun um, when it's closed it'd help if i closed it properly i think the design of those is quite nice the way again inside these angular shapes and edges the car does have a tendency to beep at you pretty much whatever you do various different views that you can bring up here you can have the full screen nav um, depending where exactly you are in the settings there's the nav then go view and it goes full screen audi were one of the first to do this with the virtual cockpit and have always done it very well in terms of offering you lots of different information depending how you want that to be your light controls over to that side and then the seats to touch on for a moment rs logo up there at the top nice hexagonal pattern again for the quilting through the center but i'd like a little bit more bolstering out of them really um our sunroof close up that have it open um, depending how you'd like to go about things with that and this uh, borderless review mirror is quite nice as well switch it off for the moment show you a little bit more around the rest of the car pop on out back decent space back here no shortage uh, of headroom feels quite comfortable obviously we've got the three seats in the back and you've got the through load as well in the armrest i'm going to pull this down seats give us a bit more storage as well if you fold those tuck them away and then towards the back of the car we've got the lip spoiler we've got the shark fin antenna um, up top and we've got a car that is quickly getting very dirty driving around on these roads at the moment but hey that's exactly what it's for we are discovering it to the best of our abilities having a lot of fun out on the roads with this wonderful thing as i said while there are some things that could certainly be improved about it some little things here and there i do look forward to trying it to uh, put it into effectively its drift mode at some point as well to experience that certainly not out on the public roads but for now i've quite enjoyed driving it here and it's quite comfortable as well for the longer slogs on the motorway and we've got a lot of driving still to come in front of us so do go check out the museum channel if you haven't already for the journey ahead to get this all the way back to the barn to visit the garage for the first time after a few more things on our journey of this particular adventure for now though that's all it's actually very cold up here i want to hop back in the car we will continue our drive further into italy and i'll see you again very soon cheers